The following podcast is recorded and produced by the Podcast Precinct in affiliation with the network at BICBP-radio.com. The Podcast Precinct. Consistency. Creativity. Culture. The Nostalgia Funhouse proudly dedicates all episodes in the loving memory of Connie Chirac. So, Johnny, I've, I've been hearing really great things about this Nostalgia Funhouse. It just brings back so many great memories. Andrew, uh, another reason I'm getting in line with you here is that you really vouch for this show. So, I'm just going to believe you that this is the show that you know I've been wanting, which is just talking about all the fun stuff from our uh, yesteryear and years before. Uh, and I really hate anything meta, so I'm glad that what we're doing right now is not that. Oh, no, definitely. What is meta? Is, isn't that Ron Artessa's new name? <laughs> well, add world and peace to it, sure. <laughs> yeah, but this is, this is great. They Like, last year they were, like, tearing play sets and Halloween costumes. And well, they, that sounds cool. They get, like, these weird court recordings from, like, pop culture courts. Does anybody care about court cases? Uh, these ones are kind of cool. They put hmm. Scott Kelvin on trial for Santa Claus there. But, oh wow! Yeah. Okay, you're. That sounds interesting. Yeah, man. You know what's the best part about this is though? Is I hear they always got a really great sponsor. You can check it out right there. Did I forget to invite you to the pool party? Well, maybe next year. On those occasions when you need to make a big splash, there's the Super Soaker 100. It has a powerful air pressure system. Oh. A range of up to 60 feet. And a drenching spray. The Super Soaker 100. It's a water gun of a higher caliber. Also the 50 or the ultimate, the 200. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Back to the Nostalgia Funhouse. I am your co-host Andrew Lenz and always joined by my co-host I still love saying it because it makes you sound like a 70s 80s DJ jamming Johnny Townsend how you doing hey Andrew I'm doing good I'm very excited today to talk about uh, the movie we watched which is like one hot crazy summer in an American pie uh with the wet summer Paul Rudd movie that we watched <laughs> no it's one crazy summer <laughs> that's what i said Not one even. super wild insane wet crazy summer camp in july that's the movie we watched it's really good that was the i had to laugh because i'm sitting there waiting to punch into work there's the thing and you just have the complete wrong title and i'm like it's one crazy summer and you are like a mother trying to call (laughs) a video game system something other than a nintendo yeah yeah in my defense it the title is very similar to another movie that i have seen that i really like so when you said that that's the movie i originally thought you were talking about the one that's at a summer camp has paul rudd it's one of paul rudd's early films Wet Hot American Summer, I think is the name of it. It's a very funny, goofy movie. And that's what I thought you meant. I was like, all right, yeah, let's do this. But then I realized oh, no. that the movie you're talking about is not that. And I, in fact, have never even seen nor heard of this film. So I, I went into this pretty blind with no nostalgia at all. No nost- Okay. So it's going to be unique for you. Oh, yes. So as Johnny mentioned, we are reviewing one crazy Summer. The movie started. The movie's done. Not really. I just want them to come running in from the lobby, thinking that they missed something. Ha! I'm Ed Stewart, movie star, also known as Bobcat Goldthwait, and me and my friends John Cusack and Demi Moore. I hate boats. I'm not getting on any boat. I beg to differ. Just had one crazy summer. Chili. Killed our own food. Dazzled women. Ah! Be 
ready for me, Hoops? We were party animals! Everyone loved us! My car. And we loved every minute! By the end of the summer, I felt that prone a lot personally. I felt a little bit better about who I was and where I was going. Okay, let's move it out! Here we go! And I gotta say, nostalgia wise, I have tons with this. So I'm um, we're just gonna jump right in. So yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So let me tell you my little personal history. So my brother wait, wait, I, wait, 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 wait. Before you do that, I just want to give a little background. This is a 1986, if you have not heard of it, it's a 1986 yeah. comedy movie. Uh it's it's if you watch it, it's on Tubi for free. So you can watch it on there. And uh, it honestly stars so many people uh, at the cusp or the beginning of their career. It's pretty wild. It's crazy. Uh, Bobcat Goldway, John Cusack. John Cusack's pretty big at this point. Yeah, but it's a really young. Jo- he's really young in this. Uh, he's very young. You know what I found out, too? Okay. So right after I'm viewing this and we picked it and we went over our John Cusack, Pud, Paul Rudd war a little bit. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I found out that John Cusack is in the Dallas Fort Worth area and he is doing private intimate screenings with Q and a of two of his movies. Six, not this one. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not this one. It's uh 16 candles and say anything. Oh yeah. There's two big ones. Yeah. So I was like, if he, if he was brave, he would have done this. And, uh, and uh, what was that movie where the cold chases him? A movie a what? <laughs> it's like one of those disaster films. Uh oh, 2001 or something like that. Is sure. that right? When was the world supposed to end? Uh 2012. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I really <laughs> unironically think that movie's a really fun movie. He, he runs a, from the cold. He has a very uh very large range of work from like oh yes. Better off dead. To like 2012 and what was the other oh, that one where he's trapped in the room and he's the writer what is that called is that 1408 yeah 1408 have you ever seen that no i have not oh, it's uh him and samuel jackson he's like a writer or something and supposedly there's a room that nobody can stay in in this hotel because it's just supposedly haunted and it messes with your head and everybody oh yeah okay yeah. i never saw it but i remember i remember this yeah. thing yeah identity like he's got a right but he's awesome don't forget about con air when he stole the o'brien from star trek's uh prize car to track down them <laughs> look get- he's fine like I said, 2012, I really do like that film. It's not a good movie, but it's a fun movie. Uh, but I'm Team Paul Rudd all the way. That was me and Andrew's argument. Yes. I'm <laughs> I'm John Cusack. <laughs> John Cusack is very, very underrated. Uh, but Demi Moore, Curtis Armstrong, better known as Booger. Yep. Revenge of the Nerds. And he was also on, for those who... Uh, don't know that he was on Supernatural for a long time. The show Supernatural, he was on there for quite a while. Oh, I would have watched that now because I would have been like, "Hey, there's Booger." There's Booger. He doesn't show up to like later seasons. I'm, if I'm thinking right, but there's like 15 seasons to choose from. So good luck. <laughs> and I think he's one of those characters that is supposed to be playing like an 18 year old in this movie. Oh no, he's actually around. Like, oh no, yeah, like an 18 year old in this movie, but he's really like almost 30. Well, that's all those movies in the 80s. All these people who are playing teenagers are like already have a mortgage. <laughs> so a legendary Bobcat Goldway. Bill yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The Bill Murray's little brother, Joel Murray. Uh William Hickory, who is better known. I had to look him up, but he was what no, my computer's not like wanting to work. Um, what was? Oh, he was the old man in National. He was Uncle Lewis, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Oh yeah, yeah, father. Yes. 
There's uh, a, there's a couple people in here who are those people that you're like, oh, I've seen him before. Yeah, because it happens a number of times. John Flattery, a lesser known SCTV. Yes, yes. Alumni. Yep. Uh, John uh, Musancic, better known as Sloth from the Goonies, also a former NFL player. I was looking at a couple here. Jeremy Piven. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't forget who, that. Yeah. Who are you like? Is that Jeremy Piven? <laughs> oh, it's there's no mistaking who that is. Uh, the yeah. grandma, Billy Bird, who has played in tons of stuff. Yeah, well. she's been in everything. Yeah. But it is a very star-studded cast for the time, I feel. Yes. It is. It, no, I, I definitely agree there for sure. It's full of people that you've either, you either know exactly who they are right away, or you'll be like, or you'll be like uh, I knew I've seen them somewhere. It's one or the other for everyone in this movie. Now, Andrew, I interrupted you. What was what okay. is your history with this movie? So uh, we had free HBO growing up and we watched a lot of it. I don't know how um, from what I understand and what people have told me, my aunt is a very attractive woman. So she was there when we got cable. So the we just think like the cable guy was like hey i'm just gonna hook her up and maybe i can hook up so i was able to watch like the tyson fight for free (laughs) and this is like when my family was like living just above probably the poverty line if not close to it but we had hp for free so we're sitting there, my brother and I were watching, we're just randomly watching HBO. And all of a sudden, if you've seen the opening animation scene with the rhino. Oh, yes. Like, yeah. Oh, look at this animation. Like, it's going to be like an animated movie. But, you know, we could watch whatever we wanted. So it didn't matter um, <laughs> if you listen to the show. So we're watching it and we're like, oh, this, this is a pretty tame movie overall, though, I would yeah. say just from well, especially by today's standard, just. The raunch in here is nowhere. I guess we'll get PG-13 today. Oh, I'm talking about like in the beginning where he's showing the rhino and it's rhinos looking for love. And then it comes upon the cute fuzzy bunny. So we're like watching it. And then the fuzzy bunnies are making fun of the rhino saying, nobody's ever going to love you. You got face. And then all of a sudden he was like, and then he pulls out in a rally submachine gun and and just like destroys them all. We're like, what are we watching? And then we it went into it, and then we just started watching it, and it's become like a favorite over the years. So, but to get into it, it like we said, John Cusack stars in it. He is a graduating high school student named Oops. No, yes, never says his real name. I'm wondering if that's his actual real name. The gist that I got was that that's his real name, and it kind of allude to it throughout the movie in that his parents like his his family has a history of athletics and stuff like that and they assume that's what he was going to do and so they named him hoops because they love basketball is the gist of it but the joke is he's not good at basketball at all no no and his friend that's played by joel murray uh... i also wanted to bring up too andrew what wasn't there a time when there were a lot of these movies that kind of had an animated opening sort of thing, I feel like there was. There had to be quite a few. I don't remember. I think this is the only one that I can remember. I feel like it's happened a bunch before. Where the movie itself was live action, but the opening is animated. I don't. Know, I can't think of any other than. I'm going to Google this. I'm sure yeah. I'm. I'll go into. Uh... Yeah, you go into it. I'm going to Google my own thing for once. So Hoops has his friend George. They're graduating, which is absolutely, it, it's funny at this point. Or the best way to put it is in the beginning, his mother gives him his cap and gown. And she said that she washed it, which you don't wash. And she said, well, it's a rental. You know, you got to, you got to do that. And it just absolutely shrinks. So there's, they're graduating. And his friend George is like, hey, listen, man, why don't you come to Nantucket for me? Hang out at my grandmother's house. We'll have a great time all summer long. Uh, You know, we worked really hard, all the studying. And this is like one kind of like one of the first jokes when he's like, hey, hoops, what's this? What's this word? (laughs) And he's pointing to his diploma and he's like, that's your last name. So 
yeah <laughs> yeah yeah uh the second that they throw their hats up in the air and then the cats come back down and one of them stabs the guy in the back is pretty great that's what i was hopeful was for that joke it's like all right that's that's a johnny type gag right there oh there's a uh, lot of, I, there's a I, lot of movies with animated openings by the is way it really i found a top 10 list even from screen rant who does a lot of movie stuff um with uh, oh, what was the big one that I just saw? I hate they're going through these articles. Tomcats is one. Uh oh, okay. Now of them. Oh god, it's a mad, 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 mad world. Uh, pink, obviously the Pink Panther movies. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Space Jam did too with the Looney Tunes, if I'm thinking correctly, and uh. There's a lot of them that did it apparently. So okay, so. it's 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 good to feel slightly validated for once. <laughs> but there's a lot of like gags in this. Like, yeah, there's. The movie, I was gonna bring this up to you. Yeah. All right. So throughout the whole movie, I sort of felt, and again, just realize I'm coming at this with zero nostalgia. So. Th- just from some of the gags in here, this should be a Johnny movie. Is it a Johnny movie? I'll let you know at the end. The thing about this is I did feel that this movie was sort of struggling with what type of humor it wanted to have. Like, cause there's a lot of Johnny type jokes in here, which is obviously the ones I'm going to, to go for. I mean, I have a lot, quite a few of them written down because they made me laugh, but then there's a lot of other ones where this is sort of like a, a more nuanced type comedy at times too, at the same time, it's sort of like a struggle with both. It's the tone to me kind of jumps all over the place in terms of comedy. Yeah. I noticed that watching it now that it is kind of all over the place. It's not quite sure what it is. Yeah. Which makes me sad because I think if they would just decided to go 100% into the Johnny type comedy, I, I this would be a home run for me, especially. And just you know, actually, just to quickly sum up this movie, this is your classic '80s movie where Demi Moore is about to lose her grandfather's house. Rich guy is about to buy the land to use it for development, but him and his what son, is? A, I'm going to ask you this: What is? She keeps saying, "What was her grandpa's house?" Because I think it was I never like a boarding house. Is that what it was? Okay, I was trying to figure out because she kept saying that so many people were going to lose their home. And I was trying to figure that out because I don't remember. They probably did, but I don't remember them saying it was a boarding house. I think they were implying that it was a boarding house. They didn't really get into it. Like She didn't mention any memories of her grandfather or anything like that because, once again, it fits into Johnny and I's nice little neat little package of an 89-minute runtime. Thank you. Yes, that's another positive for this film. Another thing I was going to point out too is we should, you know what we need to do? And I just thought about this. We need to make a movie hall of fame, but your runtime can be, can't be longer than 90 minutes. I love this. Just call it the 90 minute hall of fame. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Um, We'll come, we'll come back to more of that. One of my notes too, about, about this is I asked if like the first 25 minutes of this movie asks, is this a Transformers cartoon? Because the music never stops playing. Oh, no. Well, it's an 80s movie. But it never, ever stops for the first 20 I think It just changes songs like somebody's going through a playlist. They're, it's good songs. I liked all the music. But it was just funny that like it just never stopped. I like never... They, had, they even would sometimes like, I can't. Are there people talking? I can't hear over the music. You know what? Is I never even noticed that until you said it. <laughs> like i just always concentrated on the complete story and like we said the story is is it kind of borrows from summer rental i don't know if you've ever seen summer rental the great John it King. borrows from a lot of things there's a lot of uh like you said before 80s tropes in this yeah so the guys that are doing the development need to win this boat race they don't win the boat race they lose they lose their like fortune from yeah, because for some reason their really rich grandfather has decreed that if they don't continue to win this 
yacht boat championship, he will pretty much disown them and they won't get anything. Yes. So they need the house to build the development so they don't have to worry about the grandfather's money, but they also need to win the boat race to make sure they have the grandfather's money. So pretty much it just comes down to the group of losers and George, the Stork twins that are Bobcat Goldway, Egg, Egg Stork. I love yes. Egg. Yes. And uh, Clay Stork and all like the guys that get together. Yeah. They pretty much just end up winning the boat race. We just summed up the movie. That's pretty much what. That's it a is. big shocker. I didn't think they were going to win, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but how they won is great. But. So let's get into like the gags. The gags and the jokes are pretty much everywhere. Like, um, uh, what is it? Like, they don't live in anywhere, like anywhere Pacific in New York. It's just called generic New York, which I know. That's never... even the name of the school, the high school. Yes. Is literally gen- is the name. <laughs> I like the gag too. His generic high school was the name of their school. <laughs> now, the sister is funny because she has the dog. Yeah. And it's all beat up and everybody makes fun of the dog. And the... I was going to point that out. The dog looks fine. He just looks like he's just had some medical issues he's trying to fix. The dog is not, it's an adorable dog, first of all. A... <laughs> it's not ugly in the least. But I think that's another thing too. But I did love, and this is definitely jumping ahead, but I want to say now or I'll forget. I did love that they never at all ever hint that this dog is pregnant. But at the very yeah. end, it has little puppies. They all look like the little door little puppies, but all have the cones on their heads. <laughs> all, all, all this dog has has is a cone. And then like yeah. what, two or three bandages on its face? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So but that was great in the beginning when she's like in when uh, George is like, hey, we just got to pick up my sister, but remember, don't say anything about her dog. Yeah. And the two little girls are picking on the dog, calling her from the dog from Myers making faces. And the cross guard's like, if you, once again, that great, like, urban legend, if you, you know, if you make a face and you get slapped on the back, your face stays like that. See, I always heard uh, that if you keep making those faces, it's just going to freeze like that. Nothing about the slap on the back. Is- oh, I've always heard the slap on the back. Yeah. And so the girl, the dog owner, uh, slaps these girls on the back and their faces stick, which becomes another running gag. Yeah. He sees it. And the funny part was the Cabbage Patch Kid face. <laughs> also had the face. <laughs> yeah. I did enjoy that. Yes. <laughs> Even stuck too. But that was, that was kind of like one of the ones I was like, that is, that is great. Uh, I mean, pretty much it's just like uh, when they go find Akak, whose father is like severely like. Well, you're skipping some you're skipping a couple of great gags. Like one of them, one of them being, of course, they're they're trying to get to Nantucket, which is an island, and they're all in uh, George's car and they're like, oh, man, the boat's already left. But that's not a problem for our heroes. Yeah. They jump, and there's no way, obviously, there's no way, and this is the joke, that obviously, that they're going to make that jump, but they do perfectly. <laughs> so, yeah, I did enjoy that quite a bit. Yeah, it doesn't even look. When I when I was watching it. There's no, it looks a lot like those Night Rider jumps. Yes. <laughs> That's what it reminded me of. But at least they had something on Night Rider where it's like supercharged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, there was nothing on this. Like Chevy Caprice from like nineteen four, yeah. uh. But at the their friend Akak, who's played by Curtis Armstrong, they go to find him, and his father is like uh like a Cub Scout leader, but he's yes. like severely in the military and hands the kid like a M sixteen, yeah. and he's like field strip, take it to the back, clean it, or field strip it and clean it. Then all of a sudden you hear the gun go off, and he's like, be careful. That was a year yell, turn a kit. <laughs> but then they find out that Akak or Aki is collecting shells on the beach. Very nice. But this movie is just full of characters with some just insane names. Yes. Ak, Egg, <laughs> George. I like how he's collecting shells and it's like just straight like 50 millimeter. Like yeah. shells on the beach, and he's it's like bombshells, just so everybody knows. Yeah, it is. He's like, my dad. These are great. My dad gets twelve dollars a piece for them. They make great paperweights. 
<laughs> I like how they go, why don't you just wait till they were done bombing? <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, that's what you should have done, you dummy. <laughs> this is one of those stories inside of a story because Aki doesn't want to go into the military. Yeah, there's a lot of little does. short, small B stories here. And some of them, like, none of them get any any time, really. But, you know, they they knew what this movie was, too, yeah. at times. Like, they know they're not need to... This, it may like, there's, an, there's one thing that happens in the end that I really want to point out, so I can't wait till we get there. Oh. That, like, comes out of literally nowhere. That no seeds, from what I remember, were ever planted for this. It did make money. It had a budget of $9 million and made 13 at the box office. Oh, well, there we go. So... That's pretty good for 1986. Yeah, it made more than Masters of the Universe. That movie lost money. Poor Masters. One of these days we're going to review that. Yes! Does he even they ruined that? me! Uh, what was it? What was the other one? Oh, when they're, when they're finally relaxing at the beach. The beach scenes have a couple of uh, running gags. Yes. But- the I think the funniest one that I thought was hilarious was when the like the villain's girlfriend asked Hoops and the Stork twins that they she's like we have we're about to go sailing can you help us bring the boat into the water and it's like all these like very beautiful yeah just women and Hoops is like what do you say guys do you do you think we could help these ladies you know bring their boat into the water and then the Stork twins are like. No, I think that sounds that sounds like work. work. Yeah. <laughs> the one's like, I don't want to get a hernia. That doesn't sound like fun. Yeah. I thought that was great. Like that was like a dumb and dumber type thing. Yeah. Like, oh, I did I did write when you first meet the Stork twins, they're a little much. <laughs> yes. And they at the beginning. They're a little much, but they tone them down a little bit as it goes through, and they're way better as it goes on. And I love uh, but I did love the poor I did one well, another note I have on in here, and it's because of the beach scenes. It just says poor George. <laughs> oh yes, because he's buried. And that yeah. was the other thing I never noticed is they put the chair over George to shade him because he's buried in the sand. Yeah. And then the random large man, we'll just say fat guy. I don't it's the we're talking about an 80s movie. So yeah, we could say that I'm a large man myself. We yeah. can call this guy fat. Yeah. So this this stereotypical, you know, just fat guy. Yeah, of course. It's an 80s movie. It's a big guy. Guess what? He's eating. Yes. And, but he just like sat in this random chair. Did you? Yeah, I thought that too. Like, it's not his chair. (laughs) Yeah. Like, who sits in a random chair? All right. First of all, there's a lot of things. Like, as a a fellow large man myself, we're very aware of what chairs are made out of. Let me just say that first of all. This is a, this is a normal, flimsy, lawn chair that people take to the beach there's no way a man of that size and i may or may not be speaking from experience here just decides to sit on a random stranger's chair that may or may not hold someone's girth in this situation just terrible decisions all the way around are made here but he cannot hear george because he has his headphones on yeah enjoying his day Yes, and he's eating chicken and everything else, and the chicken he's waving the chicken back and forth underneath the chair, and George, George is George is trying to eat it. Yeah, it. that's pretty good. But the best part is that he also, of course, as any large man at the beach would, brings oh. a giant can of chili beans to eat. <laughs> I love the giant can. And what what do you think could happen in a comedy movie where a large man eating chili beans? With somebody underneath their chair, what do you think is going to happen? Well, the next scene is George is almost dead and needs CPR from two, uh, two. <laughs> They're fighting over who's going to. Two paramedics are fighting over who has to do mouth to mouth because they see the giant, the empty giant can of chili beans, and they know what's happened. <laughs> yeah, and this also happens again in the yeah. movie as well i i did enjoy the second time around because that was pretty funny i wasn't expecting it to happen again like that but that is that and then i um aki gets kicked out because he doesn't want to join the military and he's feeling down and he's he's talking and um egg stork played by back go away it's telling the story about a fat kid that nobody liked 
<laughs> and got picked on all the time. And so you're thinking, okay, we know where this is going. And Aki looks at him and goes, Egg, were you were, the, were you that fat kid? And he goes, no, no, I wasn't that fat kid. I picked on that fat kid all the time. He used to grab and go, why are you so fat? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Also, uh, all right. So Demi Moore was when she was younger. Was she trying to be a singer, like in real life, or was she? Because that's kind of the running thing here too. Is that's her thing she's trying to do to make money to save the house. Yeah, and I, I love it too that in the beginning, because there's the one part where she has nobody at the at the club. And then all of a sudden, Hoops helps her out, makes like an animated promo, starts yeah. doing drawings to build better flyers. And all of a sudden, everything, like everybody's there. She's got a full bone band. Yeah, that's all it took. Stuff. Yeah. But I that's don't think she was. I didn't either. I don't ever remember that. But, you yeah. know, I don't even know if she was singing, was she? Maybe. I mean, was this before or after Bruce Willis? <laughs> Uh, a year before Bruce Willis. Oh, maybe that's what it was. He was already into Bruce, and you know he's he kind of had his own singing thing going on there for a while. Wait a minute, uh, she was married to a musician. Oh, okay, here we go. One day, eighty-five. Freddie Moore, whoever Freddie Moore is, somebody uh, out there, like how do you Freddie less know? now? Yeah, <laughs> somebody out there's probably <laughs> like, how do you not know who Freddie Moore is? Sorry, uh, I don't know a lot of things, but. Yeah, so she's trying to always do these concerts. That's the only thing she can think of as an idea to make money to save the houses to do concerts. How much did they say she needed? She needed like three thousand dollars, right? Something yeah, like it was. It wasn't a crazy amount of money, worth. but it was a lot of money to make in one night from one concert in a bar. Yes, there was not. I saw it was a full house, but that was not three thousand dollars worth of people there in that bar. I hate to tell you. Yeah, and how much was the cover charge? Because Hoops was collecting money the second time. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and I mean, and the bar's got to get a cut of that, right? <laughs> yeah, because you just don't. Because you figure, okay, so I went to, <laughs> I, went, I went the wrestling route again on this one. So uh, speaking to, speaking to an independent wrestler, Jack. Okay. And he said, sometimes I get paid, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I get like 25, sometimes I'll get 50. So I'm thinking if a guy in a wrestling is only getting maybe $25, $50 at the most today, what were that the most could you get at a bar? Like, And it wasn't even like a big bar with a concert hall. It was like one of those bars with a decent sized dance floor and a stage. It looked mostly like it was just a bar and they moved the stools to the side. <laughs> yeah. Is the gist of it. Yeah. It looked kind of like not even as big as the bar in Roadhouse. Oh, I would agree. It looks either the same size or smaller. So, yeah, there's no way. Point being, there's no way she made three grand that night. <laughs> but did you like the Godzilla scene where hoops? Take I did. Like I did love. I said the Godzilla. My little exact note is. The Godzilla gag was good. <laughs> yeah. I loved the Godzilla. That was one of my favorite parts as a kid. Yeah. I've seen Bobcat getting stuck in the Godzilla and then trampling all over the model of the Becker Stennis yes. development. After the old uh, grandpa threw his cigarette or cigar that was made his mouth into the dinosaur's mouth with well, the Godzilla's mouth and made it look like he was, <laughs> he was breathing fire. So that was the other great part of that. And you might ask, how did he get into a Godzilla suit. Well, they're filming a movie called Foam 2 about a giant dolphin with rabies. Yeah. So he was actually a security guard on like the set guarding yeah. the pop truck. And yeah, if only I could figure out what this was trying to parody. I just couldn't for the life of me. I couldn't either. Yeah. I think it, it was make any sense. like an Echo oh. the Dolphin movie. Oh, I thought it was like a, a parody of like a babe a pig in the city. <laughs> I also love too when he's like, "Hey, we got to go home. My grandmother's making dinner," and then she gives him a bill. Yeah, and nobody wants to pay the bill. 
<laughs> Everybody is like, doo, doo, doo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we didn't even talk about George's uncle who's always trying oh. to win this radio contest, and he's just chain smoking. Yes. He's, he's yelling at him. Why, why would you come in here, George? What would you do? And the one time he's trying to take a bath, and he finally gets it like a cord long enough. Then he gets in there and he like slips and falls and then gets blown out of the window somehow. <laughs> yes. I, I guess because he had electronics near water. Something I can think of. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to think of, but pretty much it all comes down to. So the boat race. Yes. So the house gets sold and the banker is played by one of the actors from big, big trouble in little China. No. Yeah. I'm tell- you've seen that. Please tell me you've seen. Oh that. yeah, yeah, a long time ago. But yeah, uh, yeah. And the the thing here is that he. I mean, you see him at the at the uh, what, what do they call that? That shindig with the rich people. What was that called? Reception. I want to say something like that. And he was there, so that's kind of setting up the fact that he, you know. So she comes up with the money somehow, but it doesn't matter. He's like it. Cause he's the bank basically, and he's like, "Yeah, we're uh, we're still selling it to uh, to the bad guys, basically." So now they're like, "Well, we have to win this boat race now." Yeah. And the way that they come up with it is, they're gonna win the boat race, trade the trophy for the house. That way, everybody's happy. Everybody. Yeah. Can. And they're building the boat. Great eighties montage. Yes. Yeah. Can we talk about 80 montage? That's great. And then where they build the boat, they finally build <laughs> it and give it a great name. Yes. One of the best names of any boats. Oh, no, better than the Jenny, better than anything, any boat you've ever heard of. Yes. It's called the boat. The boat. Yeah. They named their boat the boat. Pretty yeah. great. I also like the gag where, you know, anytime. Uh, oh, you're, christening? you're christening a boat you're supposed to bring like a bottle of champagne or something and uh george is like i've been saving this for a long time and it looks like it's gonna be a nice bottle of champagne in a paper bag and he pulls it out and it's like one of those small little samples that's what you get <laughs> and it doesn't even work it actually breaks the boat <laughs> just great <laughs> i enjoyed that quite a bit <laughs> and then but there's one problem though with the boat they need, yeah they need a good engine where are they going to get an engine at, Andrew? That's a great a idea. Three yeah. phase race, rowing, sailing, and then like motorboat. Well, it kind of foreshadowed, which it. is one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> it kind of foreshadowed <laughs> this in, in the movie where, with permission, <laughs> where Egg is getting a little mad at Tutty, the rich, evil villain son yeah. there. Because he's hitting his brother Clay, and it, I never know. Well, they they already, I mean, they established at the beginning that he treats those two like garbage. Yeah. So and Teddy drives a Ferrari. So finally, Teddy comes over, drops off his car. Um, Clay store comes in, and he's got a bloody nose. First time I ever realized that he had a bloody nose, and I've been yeah. this movie for like twenty years, if not longer. I'll say like thirty. Yeah. So basically, Egg loses his mind as he should. Yeah, because his brother's been assaulted, <laughs> and you don't know what happened, but he attacks Teddy's car. But yeah, well, you you know because he grabs a chainsaw and his car's in front of him. Uh, but uh, just a winky wink, they may have a motor now. Yeah, and I just want to point out too, uh, I'm ashamed, Andrew. What ashamed of how long I kept looking at the back of that car and trying to figure out what a Q later was. <laughs> what it. <laughs> What it's actually see you later with oh. a letter C and a U, but I kept reading it as Q later, and I was like, What the hell's a Q later? You're not the only one. <laughs> you too. I just didn't want to say anything. So you're braver oh than God. me. You are braver than me. I was like, What's a Q later? Is that like his dad's business or something? You are way better than me, okay? You just admitted to it. Yeah, it's see you later is what it was supposed to be. Yeah. But they, oh, the classic, also the classic, because Hoops doesn't like boats, and they want him to be captain. Well, he likes them now, Ever you know, after yeah. Demi Moore's character makes out with them all on a boat. That's how you fix somebody's boat troubles. Yes. because In fairness, it would, it would 
I would feel better about boats too. That well, way. she told him that he's never had a good experience on a boat. Yeah. So once you have a good experience on a boat, it should be fun. Yeah. I mean, sounds sound logic to me. And but they're about to race and they have an Odie attached to their boat. Yes. The evil villain. This boat, by the way, is just chopped full of of did they run the these thing these trademark things by uh did they get permission to use these trademark things? There's an Odie, and I'm pretty sure it's a bullwinkle on the Oh yeah. On the sale. <laughs> Anna Aki is wearing a George of the Jungle t shirt. Yeah, yes, it's everywhere. <laughs> But yeah, so they cut the tongue off Odie, which I was really mad about too, by the and way. The did, bad guys did. And why did he feed it to Jeremy Piven's character? Because they're supposed to be, I don't know. Like, I have no idea. I'm thinking to myself, that felt in his mouth. That's got to. Yeah. It's got to feel. Yeah, weird. I don't. I don't think so. I don't think so. Braver than I am. And I'm oh. the one who admitted to the Q-Later thing. <laughs> <laughs> but they go, in the, they go in the boat. Uh, and another great pro wrestling thing was they, in order to go faster to the rowing, they tell egg stork that his favorite wrestler doesn't stand a chance tonight in a wrestling yeah. match. And he starts <laughs> freaking out. And I'm like, yes, this would be us. Yeah. Because yeah. I think I would have rode faster if somebody was like, Hey, you know what? You're going to watch WrestleMania all night long. And Cody Rhodes isn't going <laughs> to win the title. And I would have been like, damn you. <laughs> and then in reality will smack you in the face, super kick you like an Uso in the face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then the father, as they get into the sailing part, he comes up and yeah. he's going to take matters into his own hands. It's it's been established earlier in the movie that he's pretty handy with a bow and arrow type yes. thing. Well, it's a crossbow, I think is what it is. Yeah. And he shoots out one of the main lines. It goes. Now let's just go ahead and say that's a heck of a shot. <laughs> yes. And why did it break down like a shotgun? I, I don't know. Did I don't you know, but it's one heck of a shot, though. I will give him that much. And so he shoots it. And nobody, that was the other thing during all this cheating, like nobody disqualified him. Like they did more than that because they have officials. They show officials all throughout that race. Yeah. like nobody, But that's not the only thing they do. They literally attempted murder another guy. On oh, the yeah. Australian boat. They knock him off the boat. And uh, and Aki had to save his life. <laughs> so, yeah. And that's a great thing too, because because he saved his life, his father forgave him and let him move back home. Yeah, that's all he took. You literally had to save someone's life, and that's like, okay, yeah, yeah, you're fine. That's uh, some pretty dang high standards, I gotta say. <laughs> but there is a point where they're gonna, what is it? They're gonna shoot something else out again, but then the dolphin foam comes up and he yeah. knocks over the boat. The father falls off, and that's when they get to the motor. Part. I did love this shot of from inside the dolphin's mouth. Yes. I really like that shot because it had all the like they also established that this dolphin, of course, has rabies. Yes. And his <laughs> in his mouth. It's pretty great. And I love the driver was the little girl the whole entire oh, time. Oh, I also just realized why it's called foam. I feel yeah. dumb again. I just now foam. got it. <laughs> <laughs> We need to record early or later in the day from now on. <laughs> I'm brave. I'll do it now. <laughs> but yeah, the little girl's driving the dolphin because it's got a payback because the evil dad kicked her dog and put it in the hospital. I loved it in the vet hospital, how they had the dog pushing the other dog. And yes. <laughs> yes. It's like a really quick. It's a really quick gag. I really enjoyed that quite a bit. <laughs> that might have been my favorite just sight gag in this whole movie. And it's just, if you blink, you miss it. And it's so great. <laughs> and, but as you guessed it, the underdogs win. They go and they try and trade the trophy for the house. But the grandfather steps in and says, no. Is this where you had a problem? No, this part's fine, and I like yeah. this ending. This ending makes sense for the, these characters, but they're tying up loose ends here, and that's one of them. Basically, the grandfather uh, turns out not to be a bad guy at all, and he, and he's like, it, the deed to the house is yours. Don't worry about it, and keep the trophy. And he was like, because they have friendship. Yeah. 
That's the best ship of all, Andrew, is friendship. Friendship. Yeah. Uh, the problem I had is there, because this is also, like you said, Aki and his dad kind of, you know, make up to. So they're, they're tying up loose ends here. <clears throat> but the one thing that I was like, this comes out of nowhere is when George and what's her name? Charlotte. Is that her name? Cookie. Cookie, Cookie. Yeah, you've been saying wrestling because throw me off. Charlotte uh, and, and, and uh, I said Charlotte again. George and Cookie. George looks at Cookie and goes, let's just stop playing these games. And they start making out. And while I'm happy for George to get a happy ending here, I'm like, they never at <laughs> all. That's what you're saying. They never at all. I mean, you just got to pay for that, Andrew. But <laughs> never at all in his film, besides him saying, I mean, it's very obvious she's an attractive lady. Yeah, but never at all. I don't even think he even really talks to her during this movie, except for that. I think that's part of the gag. It's got to be, yeah. But it just threw me off. That's got to be part of the joke here. That's what I'm saying, though. That's like a, it's like a uh, um a joke they're expecting. It's a smarter joke than a dog in a veterinary <laughs> in a vet school pushing a, a patient who's also happens to be an animal in a wheelchair. And then, so that's all tied up. Happily ever after. Hoops finds love because that's that's what they're alluding to in the beginning. That yeah. this is supposed to be like a love story, but and, it lasted all summer. Yes, and yeah. summer was very short. Yeah, but I'm assuming happened? he got in. A, did he get in a school? Because he's trying to get into no. art school. They never mention that. I'm assuming he does because he, he just, finishes his art thing. Maybe he just stays there with her. He but it did make it did kind of make a really sweet basketball type shot to save oh. the yacht. Maybe he yes. actually does become a basketball player. Maybe that's the twist we didn't see coming. Though I gotta say honestly, he has a terrible four minute jump shot. <laughs> I don't think John Cusack's probably played too much basketball. He's like, that was my guess judging from it. That's one of my favorite things to see coming from a a background of playing a lot of pickup basketball in my life. I mean, there was a time when I was in high school where I literally played it basically every day or every other day and my favorite thing in movies is watching these movies and they're supposed to be a back basketball scene and you just see these people who obviously have never played basketball in their life but they're supposed to be good i think his sport of choice is i know he's heavily into kickboxing oh yeah he'd probably kick my butt in a second i'm not saying he wouldn't but i but guarantee you'll make like a, one of those guys i guarantee i'll make a three-pointer before he ever would <laughs> and then the uncle, Uncle Frank, finally wins the million dollars. Yeah. Or but, does he? But the phone disconnects, so it goes to the next person. And he steals Aki's rocket launcher and shoots the radio station. And then the movie ends with the Stork twins pulling up in their tow truck saying, hey, let's go roast marshmallows. And that yeah. is the end. Of That's the end of this movie. movie. That's the end of this movie. Yeah. So, Coming in at a great, like we said, hour and a half, which is perfect for this type of movie. It's not overstaying its welcome. Perfect. So, uh, Johnny, uh, let's get into our characters that we would play, and then we'll get into how we felt about this movie and then ratings. Who would you like to play in this movie? <clears throat> this is, man. That's what I was trying to think as I was watching this. I don't really feel like any of these characters are really Johnny. purely me. Um, but I so I guess maybe George would be was, my was going would be me would be my guess. What about you? I was gonna say if I had to pick somebody just based on the gags, it would be George. Yeah, that, would, he's the closest. I feel. Who would I want to play? Yeah. I don't want to say hoops. Um, probably Ack Ack. Yes, yeah. I yes. really like the Ack Ack character. Like, I yeah. like Ackie as the. He character. might be my, just out of just from a lack of. I mean, they're not. I don't hate any of them, but just from a who's the most likable. I think he to me he's the most likable. Yeah, because at one point he's like, "Hey, why don't you ask Cookie if she can." like help Cassandra like he's a very good hearted but kind yeah. of naive guy yeah yeah uh yeah I I would say that for you yeah uh because whenever anybody asks me 
what kind of person Andrew is. Those are the first two things I say. He's really good hearted, but he's so naive. I bet if you go up to somebody and go, Ack, Ack, they'd be like, oh, you watched Mars Attack? That's my first thought. Yeah. I'm a big Mars Attacks guy, and we got to cover a movie at some point. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a star studded cast. Heck yeah, it is. Yeah. I thought it was Shell, yeah. Shell. Well, I didn't want to. That's just for Ninja Turtle talk. So, I found out reading this the animation director, or the animation in this film was directed by a man named Bill Cop, who previously worked with the director. The director's name is Sta- Savage Steve Holland. And he did better off dead. And the two animators worked on um, the two animators that worked on the film, Dave Silverman and Wes Archer, would later be directors on The Simpsons. And they did that with the Tracy Allman show. But the other guy, Bill Cop, worked on Eat the Cat, which is another thing that we just talked that about. that makes sense because this style and Eat the Cat feel like they have some shared DNA in a way. I wanted, yeah, because that was like the one thing that I was like, when I was just kind of like cruising as I was completely accidentally ignoring Johnny this morning. Um, <laughs> was like, yeah, I got it. I was just reading it and I was like, oh, eat the cat. Yeah. And but, all I was doing was expressing how grateful I am for our friendship. And Andrew was just ignoring that. That's fine. Uh, I was want to look up before we get to our actual reviews for this movie. Uh, I was going to look up, again, I'm coming at this from zero nostalgia. This is my first time ever seeing this movie was today. A Rotten Tomatoes score of 45%, a IMDb score of 6.3 out of 10. Uh, so it's not, I mean, honestly, for this, I mean, it's, I don't want to feel like I'm putting this movie down, but from this type of movie, 6.3 out of 10 on IMDb is pretty good, I think. Yeah. You got to think about the time, too. Yeah, it's and definitely all- 80s movie, but there's only like one word they would probably change, and that's what the the mean dad calls his son on the boat. Oh, uh, yeah. That's probably the only thing I really think as I was watching this that they would probably need to change. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's by 80s and 90s movies of this type, this movie's kind of tame when it comes to that sort of stuff. And probably the chain smoke you might have got left out. Yeah, but I mean that they'd have to kick, uh, keep that cigar gag though for the Godzilla character. Yeah. So, but how? Uh, I, I'm going to hear you, or do you want? I'll go first, actually. Yeah, you go wanna, first. What are we rating this? Out I of? got the. Um, what do we want to rate it out of? What was cool in this movie? We got to think of something. Is it boats? No. Yeah. Uh, Not nah, hoops. What can we rate this out of? How many Bobcat Garthwaites would you give this? Okay, how many? Yeah, there you go. How <laughs> many Bobcats would I give this? Yeah. Uh geez. Okay, for me, this is very nostalgic. I love this movie. Uh, I watch it pretty much anytime I see it. I owned it one time on DVD before I moved and I lost it. Actually, I think it is still somewhere. But it it I just think it's a great movie. Like I said, I grew up with it, and I watched it constantly. I love John Cusack. John Cusack's amazing. As being a big fan of the '80s, I love Bobcat. Is it a perfect movie? No, but in the nostalgic sense, I like it. It's something that my brother and I watched all the time, so that's always a good thing together. Because growing up, we were not always the greatest of friends. So I am going to give this four Bobcats. While I was watching this and I felt for me, the laughs were getting fairly spread out. My laugh out loud moments. I mean, every time that I was thinking I would have this thought of, Oh no, I'm going to feel like this is going to be like a reverse Mac and me for this show. Right, but every time I would start thinking that, a gag like a dog in the veterinary, like the dog being the vet pushing another dog in a wheelchair would show up, and it would it would just reel me right back in. <laughs> so there's enough gags in here. I just wish I had more of those really stupid. I love those kind of jokes. It's just really stupid gags that come out of nowhere. I love that stuff. Um, 
man, I just wish it would have really leaned in on that stuff more. Because it's obvious that they had some some really fun stuff in this. Oh, man, you're much more of a Cusack guy than I am. I think he's fine, but he's really good in this. I mean, everybody's good in this. Nobody is is bad. There's some really fun, lovable characters here. And, uh, man, I think this is a three out of five Bobcat Garthwaite's for me, which I'm grateful for. But there's certain gags that really save this movie, including, again, the, the I'm just telling you, just look for the veterinary scene because it's so great. <laughs> yeah, I just have a great nostalgic memory of this and pretty much and also when i think about it this is like i said the same director that did better off dead i don't know if you've ever seen that one i think so a long time ago yeah. uh paper boy with the two dollars yeah you know? yes yeah um yeah. and then like because there's gags in that the paper boy always looking for the two dollars uh the two asian brothers that learned how to speak english by watching like sports casting so and they love to drag race anybody that comes up to them and they only talk like how the one only talks like howard cosell yeah. so if yeah. you pull up yeah. next to him he's like here we go here yeah. we got a great race today so i get it where he did the gags and i think he just tried to recreate that but in a summer movie yeah so yeah i think this is a good movie it's free on tubi if you've never seen it, go check it out. Uh, there's a lot of really fun gags in this. I do recommend it overall. Yeah, it's a great little summer movie. That's one of the reasons why I was like, hey, we should do this. Because it is summertime. So yeah, I hope you have one crazy summer. And remember to check us out on all of our social medias. Facebook, YouTube, Patreon, Instagram. Uh, check out our merch shop. All the links in the description below. And I think, and that's about it. And from good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Good morning.